Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Pastor A.B. from Motion Church, and I am so excited and so thankful that you took the time to watch this message. As we prepare to step into 2020, I truly believe that this message will inspire you, will equip you, and give you some practical nuggets as we step into 2020. So go ahead and grab you some paper, go ahead and grab you a pen, because the Word of God is coming up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Once again, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this message. I pray you had an amazing Christmas holiday season celebrating the birth of our King, Jesus Christ. Man, as I was reading over Luke chapter 2 during this special time, I noticed something that was mentioned twice in this one chapter that caught my attention. Luke chapter 2 verse 40 says, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. And later on, in Luke chapter 2 verse 52, it says, And Jesus, you see it, grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. I want to take a moment to talk to you from this subject, growing forward, growing forward. As 2020 is among us, what better time than now to learn about growing forward, growing forward. See, Luke chapter two, verse 40 says, and the child grew. 252 says, and Jesus grew. Anytime God takes the time to mention something twice in one chapter, you will not need to lean into that thought. So the question is this that you see on the screen. How do you grow forward? How do you grow forward? Our first thought of the day is this. Grow your relationship with God. Grow your relationship relationship with God. Matthew 6, says, but seek what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. As you step into 2020, above all else, seek first the kingdom of God. How do you grow your relationship with God? I'm glad you asked. First, find the time. Next, find the place. Next, find the Bible. Next, Find a why. And next, find your voice. Now, calm down. I'm going to break all that down for you. Find the time. Find the place. I'm just like you. My life is constantly on the go. My life is constantly moving back and forth. My life is constantly in motion. But above all else, you and I have to spend this time with our God. Not out of duty. I'm talking about out of desperation. I'm talking about out of relationship. I'm talking about I I want to spend time with my God. It's an opportunity to spend time with God. And just like anything else that's important to me, you need to find a time, find a place, try your best to schedule that time, calendar, calendar that time, block off that time, and by all means protect that time because it's through that time that you find the strength and the wisdom to be the best individual that God has called you to be. Covet that time above all else. Find the time. Find a place. Find a Bible. What do you mean, A.B., when you say find a Bible? Man, it's almost 100 plus translations out there uh, of the Word of God. Find a Bible. Find a translation that truly speaks to your heart and dive in when you spend time with God. Find a why. What do you mean by that? This is what I mean. Maybe you want to know more about anxiety. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about what does the Bible say about fear? How do I overcome depression? How do I overcome loneliness? Find a why and begin to search the scriptures because everything that you need is inside of the word of God. And last but not least under this point, find your voice. And I simply mean this, find your prayer life. Once again, you and I are constantly on the go and constantly getting busy in all these different things. And sometimes our prayer life goes out the window, but find your voice. God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear what's on your heart. He wants to hear what's on your mind. He wants to hear you give him thanks and glory and honor. Find your voice. One of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. God says, hey, I know you got a lot going on. I know you're excited about 2020, but take time to call to me. 
And when you do, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Our second thought for today is this. After you grow your relationship with God, grow your relationship with yourself. That's right. Grow your relationship with yourself. Mark chapter 12, verse 31 alludes to something amazing about this, where it says, listen to this, love your neighbor as yourself. You hear that? Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Check this out. It's hard to love your neighbor when you don't love yourself. Did you hear that? It's hard to love your neighbor when you don't love yourself. Because Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Better yet, it's hard to give whole love when you're broken in pieces. It's hard to give whole love when you're broken in pieces. This is why Jesus commands us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Take time to grow your relationship with yourself. How do I grow my relationship with myself? I'm glad you asked. Thought number one, take some time to rest. Take some time to rest. You guys see this water in the background? Man, please, please take some time to go on a vacay. Take some time to do something. Take some time to rest. I learned something last year. Being busy doesn't necessarily mean you're productive. Being busy doesn't necessarily mean you're productive. Oftentimes, it means you're unbalanced. So take some time to rest. After you take some time to rest, make sure you take some time to reflect. Make sure you take some time to reflect. And as you're reflecting, make sure you take some time. If the Holy Spirit shows you something in your heart, if the Holy Spirit shows you something in your mind, after you reflect, there's nothing wrong with this. Take some time to repent. Take some time to say, God, I missed it there. God, I apologize. God, I'm sorry. Help me become a better me in 2020 by your grace. Take some time to repent. And after you reflect, after you repent, hey, take some time to rejoice. God has been amazing to us. Even though sometimes we have a rough year here or a rough spout here, Hey, it's always something that you can take time to rejoice, to give God some praise and to give God some glory. I don't know what's on your heart. I don't know what's on your mind, but make sure you also take some time to release, release the cares from yesterday, release your past, release all the fear, the stress, the guilt, the anxiety, all this stuff that tries to pile in our minds, the, the shame. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Also, take some time to realign. Take some time to realign. After you rest, after you reflect, Make sure you realign and really, really engage with what God has for you in 2020. Realign. Because just like our cars, you know how we drive our cars for a while and then things begin to get out of balance and things begin to get out of alignment. The same thing happens with our lives as we continue to go on from year to year. So take some time to realign. The third thought for today is this. Grow your relationship with your purpose. Grow your relationship with your purpose. Man, I'm excited about this one. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5, but the purpose, you hear that? The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man or a woman of understanding will draw it out. The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man, but a woman of understanding will draw it out. This is what you need to do as you walk into 2020. Draw out who you are. Begin to draw out inside of you. Draw it out who you are. Draw out why you are. And draw out what you are to do. Because the purpose is inside of you. It's up to you to bring it out. It's up to you to draw it out. Draw out who you are. Bring out why you are. Bring out what you are to do. I want you to lean into this scripture. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 26, and he has made from one blood every nation of men 
to dwell on all the face of the earth. Here's the part I want you to lean into. And he has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. He has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. In other words, since you're here during this time, that's a clear indication that you have a purpose and a part in God's plan. Let me say that one more time. Since you're here during this time, that's a clear indication that you have a purpose and a part in God's plan. How do I know this? Because God has determined your pre-appointed time and the boundaries of your dwelling. See, whatever problem claims your attention is calling attention to your purpose. Whatever problem claims your attention is calling attention to your purpose. Draw it out. Draw out who you are. Draw out why you are. Draw out what you are to do. And make sure you do this. Draw out your gift. Make sure you pull the gift that God placed inside of you. Pull it out of your heart. Pull it out of your mind. Draw it out. The Bible says this in Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Did y'all hear that? It's your gift that's going to make room for you and bring you before great men, before great women. It's a gift that God has placed inside of you, but it's your responsibility to draw it out. God gave you the gift. He did his part. Now you got to do your part. You have to draw it out. Listen to what Paul told Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, Paul told Timothy, he says, I know you're a busy young man. I know you got a lot going on with work and all this stuff. He says, but Timothy, hear me, Timothy. He says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. Whew. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says this, therefore, I remind you, Timothy, to what? Stir up the gift of God, which is in you. In chapter, in, the, in 1 Timothy, he says, don't neglect the gift. So something must have happened between 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Maybe Timothy forgot, or maybe, get, maybe Timothy got distracted like we all do. And Paul says, son, I remind you, don't get distracted. Stay the course. Stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Lastly, as you step into 2020, grow your relationship with others. Grow your relationship with others. See, we were created for community. We were created for relationships. As I was studying this message, Romans chapter 12, verse 10 really spoke to me. You guys see it on the screen. It says, love one another with brotherly affection. Do you do that? Do I do that? Do I love with brotherly or sisterly affection? He says, outdo one another in showing honor. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1 says, hey, 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 I know people are gossiping. I know there's envy. I know there's jealousy. I know there's strife. He says, but don't you get caught up in that. He says, no, no, no. Let brotherly love continue because we was created for community and we were created for relationships. Proverbs 27, 17 says it best. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Today, as we conclude about growing forward, it's only right that I ask you this question. You guys see it on the screen. What's stunting your growth? As we talk about growing forward, what's stunting your growth? Who or what is standing in your way from becoming all that God created you to be? Who or what is standing in your way from becoming all that God is calling you 
to be. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 comes to mind where it says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You was running really strong. You was on fire for God. You ran well. But who hindered you from obeying the truth? Look at verse 8 as we close. He says, this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. You was, you was running a good race. In other words, instead of growing forward, you're now withering backwards. This is not the time for you to wither backwards. 2020 is your year to grow forward. The most excellent way to grow forward is this. It's through your relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you disconnected yourself from Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't know anything about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about him. The Bible lets me know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that, that whosoever, that's me, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, A.B., how do I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into my life? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead on the third day, that you shall be saved. And I guarantee you, Jesus Christ will give you the power and the ability to grow forward like you never grew forward before. If that's your desire today, let's take a moment to pray this prayer. Believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. I want you to repeat after me and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord over my life. And today, I take the time to repent. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, give me the strength to grow forward. It's in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Woo, there you have it, folks. Growing forward. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for what God has for us in 2020. And I am looking forward to growing forward through our relationship with God and everything else that we share today. Hey, for more messages from us, be sure to check out our website, www.motionchurch.net. Go to the website, check out what we're all about. And once again, thank you so much for your time. God bless you and happy new year.